All right, we're going to take a look at interference patterns that are created by two sources of waves. Uh, and so what you're looking at here are two sources of uh, waves that are heading out into all directions, and the waves are creating this pattern. Uh, what's going to be critically important to look at is what's called the path difference. So if you look at a place in the interference pattern, one path length is from one source to a point that you care about, and then the other path length is from the other source to that same point. What's called the path difference is how much farther one wave had to go than the other. So this yellow segment here would be the path difference for this point. Okay. Now it turns out that at this point, where I'm wiggling the mouse, the path difference will happen to be two wavelengths. So again, this path difference is how much farther did one wave have to go than the other. And again, that, that discrepancy in distance is the yellow segment that's here. Well, it turns out in patterns like this, when you have two sources of waves, at locations at which the path difference is zero, when one wave has had to go exactly the same distance as the other, so there's no path difference along the midline between these two waves, it would be loud everywhere along this line if these were sound waves, right? If you move off to this first place where in the, um, in the picture it looks kind of like a dark line here, everywhere along this line, the wave from the left source has had to go a little bit farther than the wave from the right source. In the, the path difference, that discrepancy in distance is half of a wavelength, and so it would actually be quiet at this place. Or if these were water waves, it would all be smooth here. Um, and then you can just kind of count outward. Um, so it would be loud again here, where this wave from the source on the left has had to go exactly one wavelength farther than the source on the right. And you can t continue to interpret the pattern that way. Path difference of one and a half wavelengths there, two wavelengths there, and then finally when you get out to the wings here, um, if these were two sound speakers, it would actually be quiet over here because these two sound speakers happen to be two and a half wavelengths apart. Um, the wave from the farther speaker, the leftmost speaker, would have to travel two and a half wavelengths farther than the wave from the closer speaker. Um, so that's how you interpret these patterns. Um, let's give it another try with a more complex looking one. Um, again, to sort of interpret if these were, say, two sound speakers, where would it be quiet and loud and so on? Well, the easiest place to start is dead center along the midline between the two speakers because clearly any point along this midline would be equidistant from the speakers. That would give a path difference of zero. It would be loud there. Well, let's fixate on the quiet places. Well, all you have to do really is count. So this first band of, well, darkness here um, or quietness, if these were sound speakers, um, that path difference everywhere along that line there that I've drawn is half a wavelength. Here the path difference is one and a half wavelengths, two and a half, three and a half, and so on. Uh, four and a half over on this one, five and a half there. If you keep counting out, it's going to get loud again here. It's going to turn out the path difference over here is six wavelengths. That means these two sources are six wavelengths apart. Counting these fringes, it's neat. It's called interferometry, and you can actually tell how far apart sources of waves are by counting fringes like that. Um, fixating on the where the sound would be loud or light would be bright if these were sources of light waves, um, you can, well, as I mentioned, that six wavelength uh, path difference there. Um, if you start from the middle of the pattern, though, here, uh, here there would be a path difference of exactly one wavelength, and that's why it would be um, loud sound or bright light here or rough water waves here. A wave from the leftmost source will have gone exactly one wavelength farther than a wave from the rightmost source. And then we can just count out one wavelength, two wavelength path difference, three wavelengths, four wavelengths, five, and then as I mentioned before, the next bright fringe would be where it's six wavelengths. Now the thing to realize here is this pattern you're seeing is just the same as the famous what's called double slit experiment. Here's two sources of waves. Well, you also have two sources of waves if you pass waves through two openings. And what happens is the waves go through two openings and if you project that onto a screen, you'll get a series of bright and dark spots as the waves interfere after they've gone through the two openings. Well, it's pretty easy to interpret this pattern. You just count like we did before. Uh, in the center, there is no path difference because the wave from the left source has had to go exactly the same distance as the wave from the right source. So there's no path difference there. If we fixate on the dark sp spots, well, the first dark spot to the left of the central bright spot has a path difference of zero 
0.5 wavelengths, half a wavelength. So a wave from the rightmost source has had to go exactly half a wavelength farther than the wave from the leftmost source, and that's true everywhere along this line. Right? And then we can just continue to count outward. Next dark spot would be one and a half wavelength, two and a half, and three and a half. And we can fixate on the bright spots. You'd have a path difference of one lambda, two lambda, three lambda, and four lambda, whole number of wavelengths for the path difference along or at the uh, position of the bright spots. So that is how you interpret interference patterns.